Hi, it's Carolina with alwayseexpectmore.com and today we're doing our last video for Summer Sew Camp and that is Project 10, our zippered pencil pouch. And yes, we're totally putting in a zipper today. Putting in a zipper is actually super easy and there's just a couple simple tricks that you need to know and I'm gonna make sure to show you all of those. You ready? Let's get sewing. This is our last project of summer sew camp. This is project 10 and this is our zippered pencil pouch. And I really wanted to make something with a zipper because there's no reason to fear putting in a zipper. It's actually super, super simple to put in a zipper and that makes it really easy to make a really fun gift for somebody. There's a couple things that I'm doing a little different for this project. One is that um, for my interfacing, I'm going to use this fusible fleece. Now this fusible fleece you could also use in your coaster um, or in your eye mask, which is the last project that we made. So this is great for that. Um, and it's, you could use it for all kinds of quilting type projects. Um, and it fuses, so it kind of stays in place, uh, which is nice. Um, I'm also, even though we are using um, 10 inch pieces of fabric, four by 10 inch pieces of fabric, I'm using a 12 inch zipper. I find, especially when you're new to zippers, using a zipper that's longer is easier than using a zipper that's exactly the right size. And I've got this choice between using this purple zipper, which I think is fabulous, or using this zipper that really matches really well, and I'm gonna go ahead and go with that matching zipper even though I'm really, really tempted to use that purple. Okay, so we are gonna go ahead and put our zipper aside for now. We're gonna cut our fabric just like we have for every other project, or just about every other project, and we need four inch by 10 inch pieces of fabric. And we need two of each, so, and then another thing, and I want to have the flamingos so that I can see them because the flamingos are a directional fabric and that is going to matter on this project because I don't want my flamingos sideways on my pouch. I want them up and down. So this is gonna be four inches by 10 inches. And I am moving this over so that um, there's a good at least half inch above these flamingos and a good inch over on this side from the flamingos. So those flamingos will actually show up on my pouch because otherwise with how spaced out these flamingos are, I might not end up with a full flamingo set on my pouch and that would be sad. Since this fabric is pretty close to the color of my marking pen, I am being really dark with these marks so they'll really show up for me. So, that's three and a half inches. I need to add a half inch from there. And go over to the 10 here. There we go. So we're gonna go ahead and just cut through all four fabrics at once. If you wanna cut four individual pieces. If you want to cut two at a time and then two at a time, those are all totally fine. Now, if you don't have any kind of fusible interfacing or fusible fleece, you can skip it. Your pouch will be a little flimsier, um, which is not the end of the world, not a huge deal. We're just going to open this up and I'm going to use these fabric pieces just as a template to cut this fusible fleece. Don't worry about these creases or folds, they will iron right out when we iron the fusible fleece onto our project. So these flamingo pieces are my outer fabric, and so I'm going to fuse the fusible fleece 
onto the outer fabric. And you want the bumpy side of the fusible fleece to be touching the back of the fabric. Those bumps are the glue. And if you are using an iron or ironing board um, that is going to have clothes touching it at some point in the future, you definitely want to put a press cloth over this, which is an old tea towel, an old t-shirt, anything to cover it up so that any glue doesn't get onto your iron or onto your ironing board because the next time that that, gets, that glue gets heated up, it could get stuck to any clothes. And whoever's clothes those are, they might not be happy about that. So we'll go ahead and iron these down. Okay, we have all our pieces. We have our outer pieces with our interfacing, in this case, fusible fleece on them, and then we have our inner pieces, and then we have our zipper. So there is the outside of your zipper, which is usually the raised part, and it's definitely the part where you can have access to the handle to open and close your zipper. So it's the top of your zipper, and then there's the back of your zipper. And it's important to know which is which because we're going to be putting this together and you want the outside of the zipper to be matched with the outside of your fabric. So I'm going to take an inner fabric. I'm going to put this right side up with the zipper back facing the inner fabric. And the edge of the zipper is lined up with the top edge of that fabric. See that? And my zipper pull is way out here because, like I said, I picked a zipper that's longer than my pencil pouch is going to be. Now, if you have a right side up on this fabric, you want the bottom of your trees down here and the top of your trees up here. So this is your ground, this is your sky. Same thing with your outer. I want my flamingos, the heads up here and the feet down here. As I flip this over and line it up. I'm going to use a couple pins and you just want to be careful when pinning because you can't really pin through the middle of the zipper. So you want to pin in here and out here. So you're kind of pinning around the zipper. If you have any kinds of like sewing clips that you like using that um, maybe someone in your family has clips, those clips are fabulous to use with zippers. So it's just another option. There we go. So I've got this pinned in place and now I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and we're going to install the zipper foot so that I can stitch this with the zipper foot. So sewing machine feet vary a little bit by different kinds of machines. This is a baby lock jubilant and this is the zipper foot that comes with it. Um, you may want to refer to your sewing machine manual to know what your zipper foot exactly looks like. Now this has two spots where it can clamp in to my um, presser foot area. So here on the back of my presser foot is a release and I'm gonna, just gonna release that. And as you can see, this foot just came off and I'm going to put it right in here. I'm not gonna set it anywhere on my table because that's a guaranteed way that I will lose it and never find it again. So I want to be stitching on this side of the presser foot. So I'm just going to lower my foot so it snaps onto that side over there. And so now I have that presser foot installed. I want to move this zipper head out of the way. And I'm going to stitch. The edge of this will be able to be right up against this fabric um, and it's going to stitch close to the edge of that middle of the zipper but it's not actually going to stitch the middle of that zipper. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now depending on your machine you may have needed to move the needle in with this machine I didn't have to move the needle because the presser foot was on either side. So that may be a thing depending on what kind of machine you have. 
you definitely wanna check before you start stitching because otherwise your needle will hit the center of your foot and it can break and snap and just go anywhere haywire. And that's just not fun. There we go, all the way to the edge. Press her, our needle up, press her foot up, and then we can cut our threads. So now I can finger press, so origami fold this up and this down. And this is my check. When I open up the zipper, is this the fabric that I want on the outside? And if I did everything right, which I did, it should be. Also are the heads towards the zipper and the feet towards the bottom. Same with on the inside, are the heads toward the zipper and the feet towards the bottom, if that applies at all. Um, so do any checks so that if you don't like it at this point, you can just undo that one seam you just did and fix it the way you want it. Now I can stitch this again. This time I'm lining up this edge of the presser foot with the fabric because I'm going to be top stitching this down just to give a finished clean edge right up against that zipper. Now we're gonna repeat what we just did, but it's gonna feel slightly trickier because we already have some fabric going on here. We're gonna take this fabric heads up feet down, put again the back of the zipper towards this fabric. We do want to line up the edges of this fabric with the edges of that fabric, as well as the top. There we go. Now we're going to take this fabric again, heads up, feet down, and turn. Line up these edges, all three, this side, the top, and this side. And now we're gonna give it some pins to keep everything in place. Now we can take this over to the sewing machine and we can do the exact same thing we did before. Lining up this edge, pressing everything, and then top stitching. Do you know what's really funny and I just noticed is that I used the purple zipper and not the teal zipper. So clearly the purple was meant to be the whole time and it's totally fine. So it does, I think, look great with the purple zipper. I'm not gonna rip anything out. Um, if this was you, you could rip it out. That'd be up to you. Okay, so this next step is the most important, crucial step, and if you forget it, you're gonna be so sad. It, it's just, I've forgotten this step, and it's the worst. And that is that you wanna open your zipper halfway. It can be a little more, it can be a little less, but you want it open uh, at least uh, halfway-ish. Um, and this is going to be for when you turn it right side out in a couple steps. If you don't have this open, if it's if it's shut, um, it's going to be miserable. Um, also, in this case, because our zipper tab would be outside of our bag, we're actually going to end up cutting this part off. Um, you would have no zipper inside the bag and that would be just, yeah, you wouldn't be able to finish it because you wouldn't even be able to totally flip it right side out. Um, and even if you could, uh, there you wouldn't be able to open and close it. So it's a mess. So always, always, always open your zipper halfway-ish. Now we're going to put all the right sides together. So we're going to have the right sides of the linings together and the right sides of the flamingos together. And we're gonna pin. Okay. 
When you get to your zipper, in this case, because I've got all that fusible fleece, my zipper is definitely going to be both ends facing towards the lining. Um, I like to have it facing towards the outer fabric when I can. I just feel like that makes for a nice kind of more popped look. In this case, because the fusible fleece is so thick, it's just not possible. And that's totally fine. I'm not worried about it. So I'm laying this zipper as flat as possible. It's kind of getting folded in half. Okay, before we take this to the sewing machine, double, triple check, did we open our zipper halfway? Because seriously, undoing any of the stitching to have to open that zipper is such a pain. We want to double check. We've opened the zipper halfway, we're good. So now we're going to stitch and we're gonna do what we've done so many times, leaving ourselves a good four inch hole gap in our stitching. So we're gonna stitch, turn, stitch, turn, stitch, turn, stitch, turn, and leave ourselves a four inch gap. And try not to poke yourself with the pins. That's not so fun. The only tricky part is that stitching over the um, zipper is impossible. It's really tough. And if you have a metal zipper, you really, really don't want to because you might break a needle. So we're gonna stitch right as close up to this as we can. And then we're gonna kind of give ourselves some give as we go over it. And I'll show you that over at the machine. So I'm actually done with my zipper foot, so I'm going to release that. Release my zipper foot to remove it, put it right back in here so I have it next time I need it, and replace it back with my regular foot. Now I can put this under the machine. We're gonna go to the close to the end, needle down, press her foot up, that allows us to pivot, put our presser foot down. Now I'm slowing down as I'm coming up to the zipper. Oh, and I was able to just go over it, it didn't hit in any way, so I'm totally fine there. to my corner, needle down, press her foot up, pivot. Really slow over that zipper. There we go. And if this metal tine here was anywhere close to that seam, I would be just picking up my needle, lifting up my foot, moving it forward a little bit to make sure that I skipped over that. All right, I wanna make sure that I leave myself a hole for turning. So I'm gonna lift my needle up, lift my presser foot up, and cut my threads. So now I'm going to be ready to clip all my corners before I turn everything right side out. Let's do another check, make sure that I have this zipper halfway open, which I do, and that's the only way that I'm gonna be able to turn it. So now I'm comfortable cutting off the extra sides of the zipper. And then removing that bulk, flipping the corners. All these little bits. Just gonna write in the garbage. Okay, so I've clipped my corners, I've clipped off my extra zipper. Now I can turn this right side out through that hole that I left myself in the bottom and then also through the zipper. Now if I need to, which it's often easier to, I can just use the zipper and unzip. Of course the second I say easy, it says easy. What are you talking about? I'm not doing easy today. Use your fingers to poke out those corners, get nice, pretty corners. So that is just about done, but we need to close up the hole in our lining. So I'm gonna pull my lining out. Tuck my 
flaps for my hole in. There we go. I think I'm gonna use two pins because this hole is, gave myself a good generous size hole here. Now you could hand sew this if you wanted, but it's gonna be inside the pouch if no one is ever gonna see it. So I like to take it over to my sewing machine and close the hole just by machine. So we're gonna go right up next to the edge, back and forth a couple times to lock those stitches. And then you wanna make sure you're going through all the layers to tuck those raw edges inside and close up this hole. Needle up, press your foot up. I'm gonna cut these threads close and cut off any extra threads that I have hanging out. Now I can tuck my lining back in my super cute pencil, pencil pouch. There we go. And you want to smooth out any wrinkles that happen from turning, then you totally can give it a little hit with an iron, which will smooth out the fabric from any wrinkles that happened when it got turned, which definitely happens with the interfacing. There we go. If you want to add a cute piece of ribbon or a string or something here to the end of your zipper, give it a nice fun zipper pull, you totally can, or a little charm, but this is a great place to keep all your favorite pens, markers, and such. That's it, we're done. That is actually more than 10 projects. It's 10 videos, but it's more than 10 projects because we snuck some double projects in on some of these videos, and we're all done with Summer at Sew Camp. I really hope that you enjoyed this series and that you had a lot of fun. If you did, I hope that you'll share it with your friends and they'll get to do summer sew camp as well. I'm not taking any of this down. It's staying up and it's staying free. So if ever in the future you want to make any of these projects as gifts or you just want to make them again for yourself, all the information will still be here. I'm not taking it away. Sound good? Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you really enjoyed sewing. I have a true love of sewing and I'm so glad that I got to share that with you, our next generation of sewers and quilters. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and letting me teach you. It was just a total blast. Hopefully I'll see you around the sewing and quilting YouTube space pretty soon. Bye friends.